We're actually gonna st blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, use your words. Hey guys, so in this video that I'm just editing right now that you guys are watching, we take my stock Mark 7 Golf R. I took it at 034 Motorsports and we ran it on their dyno to get a baseline dyno run, see how much power it made stock. After that, we flashed it to a stage one ECU and TCU tune. So that is the engine computer and also the transmission or the gearbox computer. On the same day in the same conditions, we didn't even take it off the dyno. We then did a second run to see exactly what power gains we got from doing that ECU and TCU upgrade. And uh, you can see those results here back to back. Now, this is quite a nerdy video. We look at dyno plots and all that kind of thing. And so if you're not interested in that, click the link in the description, which will take you to my general overview video where you will see us take my stock car all the way to kind of stage one plus. We did a few other things like suspension, like wheels, like some styling modifications as well, all at Precision Motorworks up in the Bay Area. And you can check that video out. Like I said, link in the description. It's more of a general overview. This one is for you nerds like me who really want to see the facts and figures and have a proper understanding of what gains we got from doing this ECU and TCU flash. Enjoy it. Come on in. We'll make an exception yeah. this time. <laughs> right. So this is our shipping and manufacturing side. Shipping, our computers are down right now, so we're having a minute, but uh, obviously a lot of sway bars to go out. Whoa. Uh, so everything that we manufacture, machine, there's gonna be hard parts and, and uh, kind of raw materials to a degree sitting over on this side, waiting to get packaged up. Uh, so this is a flywheel for a 270T, so Jeff's car actually. That's beautiful. Um, this all getting waiting to get packaged up and shipped out once it's packaged and ready to go heads over to that side where it gets boxed up and sent on its way so if we come this way obviously in-house cnc machines to manufacture our flywheels and other building components dude that's awesome thank you here it is here's the heartbreaker linked four-wheel drive mustang dyno meaning that all four wheels are linked together in their rotation yeah uh, a lot of other tuners or dyno shops will just run it in front wheel drive so they'll uh, shut off the holodex and run it in dyno mode uh, so it's only running front wheel drive but that can skew your accuracy of data sure. so yeah, yeah. we want to run it as it would be on the road exactly uh in our mustang calibration certainly is on the lower end and we find that to be the most realistic with every day-to-day -day driving and, and how if you were on the road tomorrow, that's most likely the power you're putting down. Not best case scenario, not worst case scenario, but a very fair average. And one of the things that we were talking about before we uh, agreed to do all of this and do all the dyno runs is that online there's a lot of talk, arguments about dynos, under-reading, over-reading, whatever. I want to say right now that these figures are just for comparison, right? So we have my car stock with a full tank of fuel. I just filled it up on the weather like it is today. And we're gonna do our before run. We're gonna bring it back after we've done the things that we're gonna do to it. We're gonna put it on the same dyno, hopefully in similar conditions. And then we're gonna get our next numbers. So please don't even start in the comments with your, oh, that's too high, that's too low. I'm not interested. And if you guys wanna get into it, then take it to the forums. But this is literally just going to be a perfect comparison. It's a it's a measuring tool. And from that, we're going to be able to deduce how much power we've made using the parts that we're going to be putting on, the 034 tune, all the rest of it. So just wanted to say that like little little disclaimer there because I've seen it on the forums over my years of, of being involved in the, the aftermarket scene. So let's just take it for what it is. It's a measuring tool, all right? And we're gonna see how much power this makes right now. And then we'll come back and we'll see how much power it makes once we've done a few extra little goodies. So something else that we do to make sure that we have accurate and consistent figures compared from one run to another. So as Adam mentioned, uh, weather can change how a dyno run is configured and, and what the output ends up being. So we take extra measures to make sure that our runs are consistent and match properly. So we actually have a full weather station within our dyno cell what? so that we can measure barometric pressure, density, altitude, uh -huh. and other humidity-based uh, measurements 
and then compare that on other days for other. So you meetings. can also make it rain in here as well. well so yeah, you can see like right. weather for like wheel slip exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah. And then we take another step further with a full road speed based uh, fan right behind you. Okay. So that it takes in air from the top of the building. So ambient air. Uh, and will speed at the same road speed that you'd be finding driving the car throughout the pole itself. Oh, cool. So okay. uh, it wants to simulate accurate, accurate air movement throughout right. the car, not just a blast of cool air through your of intake. Course, it's not yeah. going through some ice box somewhere. It's, it's yeah. ambient air. Because again, if you guys aren't familiar with how dynos run, you can fudge numbers by strapping them down harder, by strapping them down looser, by running freezing cold air through them, nice cold dense air that these engines love. You can do all kinds of things. And so basically everything that's being done here is to mitigate any type of like fluctuation. What I will do actually, which would be a lot of fun, is once we've done all of this and we've kind of used this dyno as our test bed and everything's done, I will do a little dyno tour and I will take this car on the same day and I will go and pay to have it run on various different dynos. And we'll see how much power we can make from this car just by changing dyno. And then you guys can see just what that variation looks like. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's awesome that you guys have got kind of everything that you can have to possibly keep things at a, a level. Absolutely. It's really important when you're trying to build a calibration from the ground up for these cars. Uh, you know, you can custom tune one car one time and, and it'll probably be fine in most conditions. But, you know, we spend months refining and cali uh, refining our calibrations and making sure that they're going to last through all types of conditions. So having uh, a, the tools and machinery necessary to very accurately make minute adjustments and, and change four different conditions and then allow the ECU to adapt based on those parameters via different uh, conditions that it's experiencing is very critical to making a full and resoundingly you know, solid tune. Yeah. Uh, these ECUs in these cars are very smart and they know how to make adjustments according to the weather that they are experiencing. And all we're doing is providing it a base level of parameters to fall within and then make the adjustments cleanly and nicely. Okay, so uh, car straps on the dyno and we're gonna do the pull now, see what it makes. Um, it's always nerve wracking when you put the car on the dyno because even though it's just doing a regular pull like you do on the freeway, it just, it sounds so loud and you stand right next to the car and it's always like a little bit nerve wracking. But um, these guys know what they're doing. The car is in great tip top health because we just serviced it. So fingers crossed for a big number to start with because that means things can only get better. Is that, is that higher than you would expect or about, about right? Given the temperature today, I think that makes about, that, that seems about right. On average, I see 240, usually in the hotter months, but right. it is a very cold day oh, today. Yeah. Uh, it's dense. The right, is dense. and all those numbers are before correction factor. So there's something called an SAE correction, uh, and that tries to standardize all the numbers based off of temperature and barometric pressure. Um, the adjusted number is probably going to be three to four horsepower different, either a, a higher or lower. Um, we'll, we'll have to see what the final numbers look like. But no, it, it's, it's certainly a healthy car. Uh, it's running well. Certainly doing a carbon cleaning helps. Um, I would say this is pretty optimal for that car, it, given how many miles does it have? 200. Uh, 200. Two. <laughs> yeah, uh, 55,000. Okay, it's a pretty healthy running car then. I, I would say it's you know, not, not a lot of degradation on the motor. It seems like it's running nicely and, and turbo's still running as it should. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty good results stop. All right, cool. So like I said, we're not looking at this as a way to look at peak numbers or what this car would make on every dyno around the world. So I just want to make that super clear. Um, I don't care, honestly, what it makes right now. What I want to see is the gains we get between this run and then when we do the modification. Um, but 254 wheel, that's going to get corrected in a minute by the computer. So it might fluctuate plus or minus three-ish horsepower. Uh, but that's a pretty healthy car for a 55,000 mile car. It's pretty damn good. So um, yeah, we've got the uh, 
We got the numbers. I don't know. Do you want me to reveal the uh, the the bets? <laughs> Guys, you want to know the results for the bet? Yes. All right, numbers are in. Okay, let's do a recap. 190. I I said 254. Out. Get out. Get out. You said 260. I think so. Yeah. You said. I said 240. And I said 244. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So our official numbers. So the maximum run was run three, and it was 253.435. The lowest was 249. That was the first run, which would have had the least cooling. Okay. Because um, we were sitting here just kind of chit-chatting. Yeah. Um, the and then I did one minute cool down between the the next consecutive runs. Yeah. I got 252.5, and then 253.4. Okay. So you know, 249 and a half to 253 and a half. Okay. Roughly, yeah. you know, four horsepower so variants. Two fifty, low two fifties. Yep, exactly. That was, was very strong as well. Very, very level across all three as well. Yeah, I, was, I mean that's a nice flat curve. There's that little dip around thirty five hundred in the mm -hmm. torque, um, but yeah, I mean that's a nice looking power curve. Not bad for a stock car. Not bad at all. And so with your software, what do we expect to see on that curve? Uh, well, certainly at the 3500 mark, you're going to start to see, well, even starting at 26, it's going to go up further because once it's plateauing here, yeah. it's hitting its requested torque figures. Okay, um, so that's there, the there's going to be, itself. there's certainly going to be some more coming up here in the mid range. Uh, you're likely going to see to uh, peak torque right in the four to 4500 range, way up here. Uh, and then just the efficiency of the turbo starts to come in. It's a little, it's a, it's a large turbo for a factory car. But at the end of the day, it will choke out as yeah. you go into the RPM range. So you'll likely start to see it trail back down with a similar shape higher up in the uh, RPM band yeah. or higher up in the graph. But it'll trail down in a similar shape that way. And, and horsepower kind of following the same uh, vibe should be up a decent amount and follow a similar curve across the way. Uh, certainly a little more in the lower end because it's limiting so much torque in the mid range. So you see this dip here, that's actually the car itself limiting torque. It's, it's, right. uh, it's pulling back a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It's like, okay, all right, well, you don't, we're not looking for more than that. Uh, whereas, yes, we are. We yes, are. We are. Little car. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Listen to this guy. We're looking for more. Perfect. So, and one of the big things as well, this is coming from a guy who, I love petrols, don't get me wrong, but I am a diesel head at heart. Uh -huh. I love, my dog is called diesel for that reason. Um, and one of the things, or the thing that makes a car feel fast, in my opinion, is the torque it makes, Absolutely. not the peak horsepower. It's the torque, because that's what gives you that kind of like pushing feeling Absolutely. or pulling feeling, you know, like that, that's what your butt dyno feels. Um, and what do they say? So horsepower sells cars, torque wins races, right? Um, and if you want to know the difference between horsepower and torque, horsepower is how fast you hit the wall, torque is how far through it you go. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of the best way to put it. So the fact that we're not just going to be increasing that peak horsepower figure, but we're also going to see that torque curve, or well, it's not really much of a curve, is it? We're seeing that torque lifted as well. That's what we're really going to feel. Okay, so change of plan. We were going to take this back to the shop, do all the bits, flash it at the shop, and then bring it back for a dyno run. However, because we're here at the headquarters for 034, they have to be careful with how many people come in and out of the building because of the whole COVID thing. And so we're actually going to flash it right now to stage one, both the ECU and the DSG. So we'll do the gearbox and the engine. And um, because it's already strapped down on the, on the dyno, same condition, same day, we're going to get our A to B testing. We are going to see what this now makes with the software installed so that's what they're doing right now jeff's in there flashing at the moment and then once that's done we'll get it back on the well it's on the dyno but we'll get another run in and we'll see how much power it makes about ECU tuning and the DSG tuning as well, gearbox, is that all you do is you take your stock golf R, you call up your 034 local dealer, whatever they call them, and you say, hello, could I get some software to make my car faster, please? And say, oh, yes, of course, sir, please bring on your car in. And then you just take your car there, and 40 minutes later, it's done, and it's faster, and that's it. They don't have to open the bonnet, they don't have to do anything. They're just sitting there, clickety, clickety, click, more power. That's so cool. That's so cool. What are we saying? Things are looking good. Yeah? It's looking like... You pleased? Yeah, absolutely. Of the three runs that I just did, the maximum wheel horsepower was 295.38. Wow. So... Wheel horsepower. Okay. Wheel, yep, yeah, wheel horsepower. Okay. Yep. And uh, the maximum torque that we saw between those three runs was 334. Wow. 
So quite, quite healthy gains. Okay, so we got the numbers here on the big screen. So what are we looking at? So you see, you, you most care about torque. You're a diesel guy, so we'll start with torque. Uh, kind of what we were talking about earlier, we we're gonna see the same rise in power and rather than it plateauing where it was stopping its torque request, we we're gonna keep that puppy rising. So you see the torque really starts to skyrocket here. It peaks right around 31 to 3200 uh, RPM. That's maximum efficiency for that turbocharger. Uh, and it trails off a bit here uh, and we can manage the torque uh, decline slightly throughout the curve itself. So it's not just a peak and falling off, yeah. um, but holding that area under the curve. You know, you, if you measure the distance between the old torque and the new torque curve, there's a lot more area of power applied through. Exactly. Um, so most that, of it you'll notice in the mid range, but certainly a big pump. Yeah, um, I mean, all the way up to red line right here. And we can see the red line has been raised. Red line's been raised from 6,700 to I believe 7,200. Wow. Okay. Uh, so it's giving you more range to run out. You'll see here, it starts to trail off right in that last hundred bit. Yeah. Uh, so it's not making a ton of power up there. What that really lets you do is maximize your gear ratio. So you're at drag strip or trying to race a fella and just trying to get through the last gear uh, to get over the finish line. Yeah. And, and adding that RPM range certainly helps. And, and you're picking up more power throughout it as well. So um, certainly great power from the torque side. Uh, the ambient conditions today certainly help that. Uh, there's no question about it. Nice 40 degree rainy weather. It's a great <laughs> weather to be dynoing in, right. um, especially on a stock intercooler car. Um, we actually baseline and test these cars a little lower than the numbers you see here. Our website numbers are actually uh, right, right around five to 10 horsepower lower and five to 10 foot pounds of torque lower because they were done in summer conditions on a more exactly, average. Yeah. Um, so this is best case scenario. And, and I just, again, I really want to hammer that point home is do not look at these figures and expect that your Golf R is going to make the same. That's not what we're showing here. We're not showing that this is what you can expect ev with every single car that comes in. What we're doing here is we're showing the baseline of my car and then the gains that we've got. So I really, really do want to hammer that home. We are not here to talk about peak figures that any car that gets one of these tunes will make. We've had a customer with the same stage one Golf R go to a local dyno down the street at another company and he made 350 wheel horsepower. <laughs> so there's a huge variance between dynos and how they read. Uh, ultimately, it's meaningless unless you get the baseline and tuned comparison all done in the same day, same conditions, etc. So um, certainly great power pickup on this car and you can see in the horsepower curve like we were talking about, it follows that rise in torque as well, really pulling off from where the factory torque or power curve goes and it just keeps this nice meaty power band through the entire yeah. thing. I mean, this is incredible, like the, the game here. So I'm, I'm, my butt dyno is gonna tell me right from like low down in the RPM. And this is where you drive. So this is where you, when you're on the freeway and you're cruising and you wanna overtake someone, that's where you are in the rev band. You don't Absolutely. have to grab two gears to go down into Absolutely. third gear. It, it'll be very efficient. And that's why these turbochargers are sized to be so efficient lower down. It's, it's Volkswagen making the car more playable and, and having fun in the lower RPM range, more efficient down there. Right. Uh, bigger turbo builds take more RPM to spool up. It can feel laggy. Um, so they match this turbocharger really well to be a fun on-road car, uh, as well as keeping nice power through the track. So something we like to focus on in our tuning is, you know, no crazy peak somewhere, and then it just doubles down to something low or, or um, crazy. So the big measurement when you're looking at a down chart is area under the curve. How much area are you adding of power? This is added power to the entire RPM range. It's not, you know, just a big bump here and then it trails off. It, it's keeping a nice meaty gain in power through the entire RPM range, making it usable. You know, yeah. you can have 500 foot pounds of torque for 200 RPM, or you can have 500 uh, horsepower for 200 RPM but that's not gonna win a race. Right. You, you could lose a race to a car that has 350 horsepower if it's even across the power band. Exactly. Uh, yeah. and, and that's what you wanna maximize and look for in a clean dyno chart. And, yeah. and this tells us here that your car is running very healthily, certainly for the conditions, uh, and, and making great power for stage one on 91 octane, which 93 and other octanes are gonna make more power. Yeah. Uh, 91, especially in California, is very detergent heavy and solvent heavy to um, meet the strict requirements for EPA and CARB standards here in California. So it's different than 91 you'll find in other states. It's categorically worse. Okay. Uh, and we often have a lot of cars come in from other tuners or even stock pulling a lot of timing because they're not able to tune on this 91 octane. Us yeah. being located in California, 
with this every single day, we can tune for that adjustment as well. Interesting, okay. Yeah. So in that case then, let's say that I go on a road trip, I end up in Colorado and I'm you know, pulling fuel in there, 91 fuel. You're saying that technically it, may, be it may make a bit more power it, because right. it's it's on there. Well, I guess Colorado's at elevation, so that's It'd probably a be a little slower at Colorado. But What's the elevation to, right here? We're at sea level right here. Oh, at really? Location. Okay, cool. Yes. Same, same as me then yes. in, down in, uh, in Orange County. Because that's the other thing you have to take into account is that if you're tuning car at sea level and then I go up to the top of a mountain somewhere, then it is going to impact because obviously the air density changes. The higher you go, the thinner the air. So the engine is essentially being starved of oxygen uh, and therefore it's not able to combust as much fuel and blah, 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 and so less power. And so that's why a baseline is so important to make sure that you're accurately comparing. You can't compare a stage two or stage one number from California at sea level to a stage one number in Colorado at 5,000 foot. Exactly. It's gonna be completely different power without looking at the baselines. If you were to remove all the numbers and had a baseline and tuned run, the curve would look almost exactly the yeah. same. The gains would be exactly the same. Just the data at the ends would be different given you're going to have a certain reduction in power based on elevation. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I guess the only thing left to do right now is to get off the dyno and then go and see how it feels on the butt dyno. Absolutely. That's Strap awesome. this bad boy onto it and see how that one feels. That's but the most important part of it. It's gotta I, be fun. I think looking at this, I think it's definitely gonna be noticeable and I'm very excited. So uh, I'll be back with you guys in just a second.